In this video I'm going to assemble a 3D printed drill guide that I designed in Fusion 360 and 3D printed on my heavily calibrated Prusa Mini, aka the Prusa Little Sht. I've wanted one of these for a while now, but the high-end model for Maxminster, which I had my eye on, is just never in stock, so I decided to build my own. The parts are printed from PLA with a rectilinear infill of about 30 to 50% depending on the parts used. So this is a test of concept, although, spoiler alert, it does work. I'm using commonly available fixings and kinematic parts such as 8mm linear rails and polymer bearings, and innovatively I might add, I'm also using metal kitchen shelf pins as alignment and pivot pegs. This felt like such a good idea, I bought a thousand of these from eBay for around 15 quid. I began filming this video from my flat during the lockdown in early 2021, but I've subsequently been summoned back to work as educational institutions have reopened in the UK, and I'll probably end up finishing the video back in the studio one weekend, ready for the fourth lockdown. I've also made this into a downloadable PDF manual, which you can purchase along with all the relevant files from my website. You didn't think I was going to give you this for free, did you? Anyway, carrying on. I've made a few different versions of the parts while designing the tool, but the most elaborate was the base, which I split into four parts with their own alignment holes. I did this because I was having problems printing to the full bed size of the Prusa little shit, with parts of the first layer lifting. This was particularly noticeable on the right hand side, where the bed height sensor doesn't reach. I lined the smaller printed pieces with the metal shelving pins and glued them with dichloromethane on a granite kitchen work surface trying to keep the base flat. This didn't work as well as I'd liked, and I'd noticed that the base was rocking, and not in a good way. I was about to give up, but decided to print the part again in one go, and this time to reduce the print speed from the recommended amount to 25%. It took a couple days, but the new base was much better. I'm using Usenes PLA to print with, which is a pretty good quality filament and also comes on a cardboard spool so there's less environmental waste. So I got about this far with the segmented base, but what I found was gluing it together, the edges, the edge faces weren't parallel. They produced a joint which wobbled. So I had another crack at printing the base in one go and I managed to do this which is a lot better and the secret was to print really slow so I will dismantle this and fit the pivot sections onto the new base in the meantime I just made a very nice roast vegetable soup and my oven's warm and I'm going to use the residual heat to fit a bearing onto the shaft, which will have the chuck at the end. But first let me recap. I dismantled the salvageable parts from the first attempt and carried on with the chuck shaft, which has a B10 taper on it. I bought that from Banggood's, but the chuck I'll be using from my old micro bench drill has a zero to 6.5 millimeter opening. That's a bit small for a useful drill guide, but I'll use what I have for now and can always get an adapter collet and swap over to a B12 0 to 10 mm chuck in the future. I could also swap the shaft over with an ER collet extension, which are more readily available in different sizes and lengths. You may have noticed I've already put the inserts into this 3D printed part, and I did that with one of these, which is a Modify 3D Pro with a special end focus that sits into the threaded inset and heats it up while it's being set. And I use two different types to see which I prefer. And those mounting points could be for attachments to the jig, such as an extraction nozzle, or what I had in mind, a dedicated clamp for the heated threaded insert tool, which I'd imagine would make the task a little easier to do. You can see what I had in mind in the 3D model. As of yet, I still haven't printed that part out. I'm using 6000 2RS series bearings. These are 10 millimeters by 26 by eight, which I'll lock into place with a couple M10 locking collars at either end to clamp the shaft in place. 
I checked all the bearings for tightness and warmed one up that didn't quite fit, pushing it into place after the locking collar for the bottom piece and leaving it to cool, thus these silly oven gloves. The other thing I need to do is to fit the bearings, these polymer bearings in this section here and to clip them in place or lock them in place with the sew clip. And there is a bottom, the hole is slightly smaller here, it's a recess just to stop it from being pushed out. See the first one's in. And again, so using this special pliers that fits on the end there. Make sure they sit in. That was very satisfying. It then turned out that despite the bearings becoming cool to the touch, they could slip off the B10 parallel shaft. So I decided to push fit them into position on the 3D printed part, which I simply did with a clamp, and then installed the chuck shaft and the locking collars in place. When knocking the chuck onto the tapered shaft, you want to make sure that the jaws are fully open so you are not hitting those or damaging them. I should have really used a soft face mallet, but I'm using what I have, which is this rather unusual hammer. If you're wondering what this unusual hammer is, it was my godfather's before I nicked it off him, and he made it when he was at school, when you know they used to do DT class and I remember finding it uh, at his and being a little bit curious about it. So it's a little rock hammer, something like that, because it's been used quite a bit. And the handle is just bits of acrylic which were turned to a brass end. And it's actually lasted quite well considering, probably 50 years old. I'm now carrying on with the assembly, fitting the trunnions onto the base. Under those segments are two captive nuts, one on either side, which can be used to attach centering pegs or other attachments from underneath. It's so good having a 3D model that I can cut away to show you bits that I forgot to film. For the pivoting sections I'm using countersunk machine screws on either side to maximise the space between the two pieces. While the linear rails slot from the top and are clamped into place, I was going to glue these parts in and later decided to make everything modular in case any parts needed to be replaced. So these are my 8mm linear rails. One of them came with a little bit of rust on it which is a bit annoying but so these slot into place and then a 25mm long screw secures them. I then installed the sliding carriage, which is ever so slightly tight at the bottom. I may have pulled the parts out of alignment with the fixing machine screws, or while printing the orientation of the parts along different axes, may have caused the parts to become slightly different. I am, after all, using the Prusa little parts, 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 parts. All that said, it still slides and it feels very rigid. For additional rigidity, I made the top brace connected with an arch bridge. Typically most designs have this separate, but it made sense to design it this way considering the material I'm using. That is pretty much the completed tool. In addition I have centering pins which attach to the bottom of the base plate and can be used to centre the drill chuck to two side faces, such as a door when drilling a hole for the locking barrel. There are also depth stop clamps which attach to either side rail that allow for repeatable drilling depths. So overall it looks like probably the best thing I've ever made. The next thing to do is plop a drill on the end and see how centred the chuck is. And by the looks of it, it's pretty bang on. 
If you'd like to build one of these too, you can download the plans and all the relevant files from my website www.misspro.com forward slash shop. The manual is actually even better than this video, so I'd highly recommend it. If you like this video and what I made in it, please smash the living bejesus of the thumb upward button and write the word stinky cheese in the comments. If you didn't like it, press the other one and write something else. But remember, the algorithm gods are watching you. Until the next one, take care.